All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to share. I went to a flea market today in a place called uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina, and it was at a place called Cook's Flea Market. Now, before I get to this stuff, this is some stuff I picked up uh, probably over the last uh, two weeks before um, last weekend. I've had these for a while, so I probably got these about the last two weeks ago. These books I got on uh, store credit at a place where I'm selling some trades and. Uh, some comics I took down there. It's the K&J Hobby Shop where I'm check out the other two videos where we're all just sitting around cutting up. Anyway, I've got all of these to begin with. This is Planetary number 12. I have all of these, but I figure, heck, man, you know, these were sitting there. Uh, I got a few extra. Might as well try to do another set, maybe sell it on eBay. It's a complete set number 12. If you haven't read Planetary, I highly recommend it, even if it is by Warren Ellis. Uh, number 17, awesome story. Number 24, love that cover. Number 25, uh, John Cassie is just the man with some of this stuff. Number 26, then I got two copies of 27. And I, like I said, I got a whole set of this. I may have a third somewhere. But uh, I got this because I really would love to frame. This is the last issue. This huge wraparound cover that they have. So I got two of those. Okay. I got this. Uh, all the Commandy nuts out there. And there have been a ton of people getting Commandy. Thumbs up. Uh, who was it? Dakin Howlett. Uh, I think Hippie Collectibles showed some. Uh, forget her name. Her channel name. But Ellen up in Canada got one. She got a Commandy number one that she says is so nice. She might try to get a get it uh, graded at a comic book convention she's going to up in Canada somewhere. Anyway, Ellen Rons maybe? Anyway, this is Countdown. This is by Paul Denny. These are, this is six and five as they count backwards. Uh, tie into Commandy or what have you. I think it's a, uh, you notice I have a Statue of Liberty cover here. That's after Kirby there. Alright, this book, I got this on store credit, Batman Beyond. I, I really enjoyed this book because it is so refreshing to have a contained universe. This Batman Beyond book does go back to the t Batman, um, the uh, oh my goodness, the Bruce Tim Paul Denny universe of cartoons and stuff. It's by I think Adam Beecham and a few other people here, but everything's contained in here, and you have stories side by side with Justice League Unlimited. They're they're a feature in there. Okay, great stuff, and. You know, I just have issue two and three. I think they're up to five or six. But the story grabbed me when I saw this page. Alright, there is Kirby's Commandy. There is Kirby's Atlas, Kirby's OMAC, and Kirby's Forever People. I would buy this original page. I just love it. Alright. Rocketeer number four. Yet again, I cannot... Uh, I, I love this book. It's just simple little comic book stories by stars of today. It's four or five little stories and a pinup. This one's got a story by Dave Givens. Uh, here's a story called Waterlogged with art by Tony Harris. Uh, John Arcardi writes one. Uh, and then we have some pinups in here that are really cool. Just great stuff in that one. Now, when this came out, Legacies, I did not want to get this because it's another telling of the history of the DC Universe, how they try to tie everything in together. Well, silly me, I got these for free, I forgot to check them out. For this issue, number two, I think there were um, 10 of them that came out in, back in 2010, and this is actually a good little bookend for the DC Universe before the new 52 hit. And moving on to it, you know, I don't talk your head off. Art by Adam and Joe Kubert, the guys doing Night Owl right now. Beautiful art in this. Look at that splash page. Seems like I might have already showed these. Now, if I have, I apologize. Okay, but here's what I really like. Okay, that's that was uh, Andy Kubert with his dad um, inking over him. Anyway, each one has like a little backup feature in it as they tear, you know go every few years. This backup is the Seven Soldiers of Victory, and I think there's a Jonah Hex preview in the back. But you get the point. Number three, the Silver Age is here. The dawning of the Silver Age. And this one has a great uh, backup story with art by Dave Gibbons. 
Uh, art is by Garcia Lopez, one of my favorites, and should be yours. But it has the Challengers of the Unknown against, well, not against, but they have the uh, Challengers of the Unknown and the Sea Devils. And I think Cave Carson pops up here. One against the Octopus Man. One a oh, great Silver Age villain. It always cracked me up. And then uh, the next generation during the Silver Age, it talks about how the Teen Titans came in there and a few other heroes. You know, everybody pops up in these. And this is the one that's got an awesome backup story of Remembrance by Joe, with Joe Hubert Art. And basically, the loser, whoever's, you know, all the losers and uh, uh, Gunner and Sarge and Sergeant Rock and Unknown Soldier, all sort of, you know, you see what, ha you know, you see Sergeant Rock die in this and it's like years later and all these great war characters are getting together at a bar and they're remembering things and of course it has a little twist. It's awesome. Alright, Astro City, book two, number four. Needed this one. Alright, some newer comics that came out. Mars Attack, number one. I haven't read this yet, but who could do that? Each cover, I think they actually came out with like 58 covers or something. Each cover had one of the original card series came out. Night Owl, number one. Amazing art by Andy Kubert and Joe Kubert. They knocked it out of the ballpark. And I usually do a review every week of this. Well, here's your review. This sucks. J. Michael Straczynski did the story that everybody, well, I was afraid was going to be done with the Watchmen. He, he, he comic looked up, man. He, he took the Tim Drake story from Batman and tried to write Robin, turn it into Night Owl. He went against what happened in the book. Uh, everybody's out of character. The original Golden, you know, Golden Age Night Owl is riding around in a nightmobile with a night cave. It's just awful, 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 awful. This was what I was afraid was going to happen with before Watchmen. So, one out of four books that came out, this was the stinker. And it's such a damn shame because the art is beautiful. You know, moving on. We're now, we're back to what happened today. Stop at a Goodwill, and I got this. This is Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust. This is a sequel to the Vampire Hunter D movie. It came out in the 80s. I don't know when this came out. But this is really good. I'm not real a big fan of uh, anime, but when they have a good story, it's they nail it. It's good. So this is excellent. This takes place in the apocalyptic, apocalyptic future, and it ties into vampires and things. So I was really got that 75 cents at a Goodwill. Got this for 75 cents. Great Mouse Detective. And got the ever-loving freaking classic, The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, 75 cents. So happy, so happy. And we'll all be watching. Alright, these are quarter comics, okay? Sandman, number 43. I just need a handful of Sandman, and I keep buying the same ones over and over. This is uh, part of the... Oh my goodness. I wish I hadn't started because I can't remember. But I think this is Brief Lives, you know. So, excellent story. Here we go, quarter comic number 17 of What If. What If Ghost Rider, Spider Woman, and Captain Marvel were villains. Three fantastic tales. Okay, number eight for a quarter. What if the world knew that Daredevil was blind with a great owl on the cover there? Bonus, within these action-packed pages lurks Spider-Man. Alright, I'm down to like needing four issues of my Alan Moore run of Swamp Things. I've been years building, number 36. Awesome cover. Alright, I got a complete set of this last month, uh, put it together at another flea market uh, out in Dublin, Virginia, but these were for a quarter, so I got some extras of V from Vendetta starting to really pop up. This is number 7 of 10, and number 8 of 10, who could pass those up. Got this for a quarter, cannot believe it. This is actually a little bit of a money book, it's got some frayed edges and stuff, that's okay. Uh, this is the first appearance of Flex Metallo, Doom Patrol number 42. Uh, this was at one time in demand. Uh, Flex Metallo, if you don't know, uh, DC was sued by the Charles Atlas Company because pretty much that's his origin. You know, it ties into Charles Atlas. Great stuff. Books of Magic, number 26. Beautiful covers. Number 18. Number 17. Apparently they're backwards. Beautiful Charles Vest cover, number 14. And I got this purely for the cover. Look at this. It's a Charlton book. And this is Baron Werewolf's Haunted Library, number 21. Look at that cover. 
that is getting framed just amazing and uh really haven't looked in it from 1975 um looks like he's hosting the thing tom sutton art probably you know a few other people in here great 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 beautiful cover cannot believe that came from charlton all right Stormwatch number four warren ellis brian hitch paul neary apparently there was a reboot all right, I don't know if I had these or not, but I wasn't taking the chance. These reprint the uh, Bob Haney, Neil Adams stories of uh, Dead Man from the 60s. There's number five with Batman. A little wraparound cover. Okay, number six. No, you can't kill me. The hook is mine. I probably do have that one. All right, I got these. I'm glad I paid a quarter for them because they look much better in the flea market. Uh, I have this, but it's all beat up where I've read it for years. Marvel Universe number 15, The Books of Weapons. You really need to look at this because the guy who did this, I mean, there's blueprints and everything from hot, from everything, mechanical, aerodynamics, physics that are explained, how Cyclops' visor work, how Stiltman's stilts work, just everything, Hawkeye's trick arrows. And then I just got this because it was a beautiful copy, Marvel Universe, people that were supposed to have been dead. And, you know, look at this. You know, Mobius came back to life. The Human Torch came back to life. Yellow Jacket never died. I don't know what that... He's inactive, but... Warlock came back. Jean Grey came back. Um, Nova came back. He's supposed to be inactive. Thanos came back. Anybody else on here? The Spider-Woman came back. Mimic came back. San Chi came back. You know, I can go on and on. Pip the Troll came back. I can go on and on. Death means nothing in Marvel. Alright. I'll explain why I got these four in a minute. This is uh, Quarter Comics. Um, Excalibur 37, 38, the important one for me, 39, and I'll explain a little bit later when you see what else I got. Okay, another Charles Vess, Marvel Fanfare, number 34, and apparently they took an issue each to do a Warriors 3 story. Now I think I have all three by Charles Vess. Completed my Atari Force run, which I'm sure you're interested in. Uh, Atari Force number 10, number 11, I may even be real close, number 13. Alright, more Swamp Thing here, Mark Miller issues, some of these are damaged, but I got these for a quarter. 157, Mark Miller doing this with Phil Hester, number 148. 150. And 167 by Mark Miller. This is the one that's damaged. I didn't notice until I got home. But it's all right. All right. Could not remember what issues of Eternals I have and don't have. I got these for uh, a quarter also. Number four. Great Kirby action. And got the annual. Kirby at least did the cover. I'm assuming he did the inside. Three against the Time Killers. 1977. Got it cheaper than when it came out. Uh, got number two, just in case. Uh, I don't see number 18. Well, there's another one apparently I left it behind. And I checked out an Inhumans. I'm going to check this out, number 12. I think that's a Hulk robot or something. Uh, 50 cents for these. Uh, I got one and two of this uh, by Steve Rude. Uh, Dave Givens wrote it, Steve Rude art. Um, and somebody told me there was three issues, and I cannot believe when I found that. He gave me that for 50 cents. Got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from back in the day. This is book 36. Got that for 50 cents. A little shout out to Dick and Hallett. Um, number 47. Seems like I had a third one. And then I got these for 50 cents. I now have, uh, with what I had before, my new Frontier. I got those uh, for quarters over time. But I now have issue 3, 4, 5, and six and only one of them is a little bit water damaged and that's it so I have the complete uh, final frontier oh yeah issue 41 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle from back in the day okay I think this was a dollar uh, the jungle adventures I wanted because of Mike Manola art Walt Simonson wrote it um, looks like we see uh, Wolverine and Apocalypse with some caveman I'm gonna assume that this is from 1989 uh, 50 cents, I think. Uh, Flaming Carrot. Uh, Todd McFarlane cover with Flaming Carrot meeting the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was a dollar. 
sketch cover of issue six of Final Crisis. Who could pass that up? No idea what that's worth, but that's an iconic little page there. Okay. Charged me a dollar for this, Lost in Space Special Edition, which I cannot remember if I had or didn't, but these innovation books are rare and far between. Got this for a buck. Space War from Charlton Comics. Ditko Sci-Fi, folks. Ditko. The only reason I grabbed it. Don't know if it's reprints or what, but there you go. This for a buck. A variant edition of uh, Joss Whedon, John Cassidy, uh, number 23 of Astonishing X-Men. No idea what that's worth. Got this for a buck, even though it's beat up and wrote on. Crazy, number three. Looks like we've got a parody of Superman. And here's the big ones. I got a cool, cool, cool deal on this, man. I need number 20 now. First appearance of Stegron. When I was a kid, I had a Marvel Treasury Edition, my stepdad did, of Spider-Man fighting dinosaurs with Stegron. And it had Kazar and it had uh, Black Panther in it. And I always thought it was a Spider-Man comic book, Amazing Spider-Man. So whenever I saw the Gil Kane issues, I could never figure out why I couldn't do it. Well, lo and behold, it is a Marvel team-up. Number 19, I need number 20 now. And then one of my favorite characters, apparently when I was a kid, if you had a big gigantic lizard tail, I was a fan. I got number 142, which is I think is the first appearance of Darkoth, PM Knight out there, man. I think you're the guy that said you liked him also. Huge fan of this guy. I had this one. This is number 194 with George Perez art where they bring back Darkoth. And with that said, this is Darkoth. I was preparing to do a little um, thing on him. This is actually Ben Grimm's best friend. And Dr. Doom got a hold of him and turned him into this. And there's his, there it is. There's his first appearance. I cannot believe he had this because I just started looking for these the other day. I've always had them in the back of my mind. He's just got a certain number of appearances. Fantastic Four 142, 143, and 144. I need uh, 143 and 144. 193 and 194, I got one of those. Thor 325 and Excalibur 39. Way back, that's why I got it. And that's it for the guy. I love the guy. And then here's Stegron. I need uh, Amazing Spider-Man. I think it's 164 and 165 he's in. Can't read the print on that. The great character, I wanted him. He fights the lizard. And, uh, you know, so there you go. That's my haul. And uh, thanks for hanging in there.